Before launching into this week's hilarious episode, we've got some amazing news. We found a location for the first ever Women's History Library. That's right. But it don't mean none unless we've got funds, hun. So your support determines our history-making mission to preserve and share women's history for three months, for six months, or for a year. So call up your gal pals, because we're going to need all hands on deck to raise a small chunk of change before Valentine's Day. So send your squad to galsguide.org. Now, this week's episode. Welcome to the Gals Guide to the Galaxy podcast, where a group of gals gather for you one cool thing around our topic of the month. Is it ancient history? Is it breaking news? Is it safe for work? Well, that's up to each gal. All we know is that... Fasten your seatbelts. It's going to be a bumpy night. Welcome back. I'm Eden, and I'm joined with Leah, Katie, and Bonnie, and we're talking about our one cool African gal pal. So we've already heard from Bonnie, who talked about Wangari Matai of Kenya. But before we dive back in, I want to know some kind of random thing about our um, present gal pals. <laughs> yes. So I'm going to ask a question and I want to know what you guys would answer with. So my question is going to be, what's something about Africa that you didn't know before or that blew your mind or that you think other people should know about because it's so fascinating? Dun, 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 dun. Okay. <laughs> what do you got, Katie? <laughs> um, well, mine came through my research on my one cool gal. Um, and her nationality, she is from Nigeria. And I didn't realize that English is the official language of Nigeria. Mm. Ah. Yes. I mean, my gal talks a lot about how the danger of only hearing one story. And we don't have a vast knowledge of other cultures and right. what they do. And I think we don't think that they're similar to us. So here yes. you are. I find out mm-hmm. my gal's, uh, one of her native languages is English. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Now, of course, um, Leah found the fact that there are over 20 or over 2,000 recognized mm-hmm. languages spoken in Africa. So if you Wikipedia Nigeria, it says official language English. And then below that has like 10 other languages. Right. right. That are recognized <laughs> and listed. Yes. But it still it just kind of blew my mind. But that's yes. the primary yeah. language. Yeah. yeah. Because what... Um, what most people from Africa end up knowing uh, at least two or three languages because oh, they're yeah. going to learn the colonized language, mm-hmm. so English mm-hmm. or French or Portuguese or Dutch right. or whatever it is. Yeah. They're going to know their tribal language. Mm-hmm. And then if neither one of those languages is English, mm-hmm. most people in the world then it's English. End up learning English as well. Right. And then if their school ended up being in another place or another language was available right. at their then school. Right, then you have a fourth one. Right, exactly. And then you just keep adding them on. Exactly. Them on. So <laughs> it is kind of mind-blowing that there's that many languages. Absolutely. Yeah. It makes me feel bad for knowing <laughs> what. <laughs> well, and three years of Spanish, but I can only do Donde Está El Baño, which is where is the bathroom. <laughs> but that's an important yes. one. That's Critical why I remember it. Because I felt like that would be the priority if I was in a Spanish-speaking nation. It would be right. like, where is the bathroom? <laughs> <laughs> Truly, this is priorities. probably not even correct, but the Spanish I tried to rem- like make myself remember yeah. uh, was the phrase "hot butter" because <laughs> la- 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 like tequila this- caliente. <laughs> because <laughs> can never know. Why right? do I feel like this is extremely important to you, Katie? <laughs> <laughs> hot butter, hot butter. Yeah. Wait, That's are you hilarious. End up getting like melted butter, or are you gonna get like spicy butter? Maybe it's both. Uh, uh, ooh. Or herbed <laughs> butter. <Tri> caliente. <laughs> Oh my gosh, it's funny. Spicy butter. <laughs> yeah, I learned, oh. uh, I've done a little French in school, and then I did study abroad in France, so I pretty much just know food and how to ask for it. Right. Like for menus. Ah. Je voudrais un poulet. Oh. <laughs> That like sounds so, and I like how you just casually drop. Yeah, I just went to France for school. <laughs> Oh my god, that's hilarious! <laughs> no, they made us Dying. do like a scavenger hunt where we had to go out into the town ah. and like talk to people for the the French 
Oh, wow. So we had ah. a little pra- practicing help. Conversational. A little immersion yes. experience. Beautiful. All right. So what's your thing about Africa? Uh, mine is yes. uh, way back in the day, like Pangea Day. Like, yeah. It was like the deserts were not deserts. It was oh, like yeah. ocean. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Like they have fossils of like sea creatures. Right. Big ones. out next to like the pyramids. <laughs> right. Yeah. Like you don't think of it as a desert. So that would have been, that'd be cool to, to go up into the TARDIS and roll it back. <laughs> right. And see when there is some oceans. I'm loving the Doctor Who yes. reference. It would be amazing. I am always fascinated with the, um, it's the animals that I always like end up like coming back to. I mean, I think part of it is I had no idea of just how big the whole northern part of the desert is. Yes. And how much wildlife is in that region. Um, but the Great Migration, I watched, I think it's a David Attenborough. There's always an Attenborough. It's one of yes. the Attenboroughs anyway. Uh, did a documentary about the migration of how far these wildebeest and zebras travel uh, just for their yearly like mating ritual and getting foods and escaping wow. the desert and then like coming back and the lions that are hunting them like the entire way and how many are going to make. And I'm like, I am so encapsulated by this journey <laughs> and they do it every year. So like, obviously most of them survive because they do it again. <laughs> mm. But I'm always like just amazed by it because they have helicopter shots of just it feels like millions and I'm over exaggerating but I might not be it might be like just millions of animals that are all following in line making this little journey and they have like the stronger ones on the outside and the weaker ones you know what I mean like the pregnant ones and uh the elderly in the inside to like protect them is a little and I'm like strength in numbers strength in numbers so I don't I find it amazing and a microcosm of like what society should be. <laughs> you know what? I have to agree because <laughs> I really think that if we observed animals, yes. we would be and like paid attention. We'd be nicer to each other. And not just be like human mm. arrogant people yeah. and be like they're beneath us because they're animals. No, they're you know, smarter. we would learn so much from mm. society. Yeah. And what to do and what not to do if we paid attention. Exactly. They're so incredible too. I was just thinking while you said that, that sounds like a lot of work to take that journey. I think it does. I'd be that animal that nobody reproduced with. <laughs> right. So I'd be like, <laughs> stay back I'm going to stay here. <laughs> Y'all you be back in a year fun. anyway. <laughs> but that's just what you do when you're that animal. Like, that's your job. Exactly. You've been doing it every year since you were born. What else are you going to do? <laughs> Everybody's you know, gone. There's no food there. Katie, are you a penguin? <laughs> I sit on the eggs and wait. <laughs> We played this board game Jonah wanted last <laughs> night called Escape Room. Oh, and we yeah. sucked at it so <laughs> bad. And we're supposed to be solving these codes and using these ciphers to figure it out. And we finally figured out the first mystery and then had 20 minutes out of 60 left. <laughs> right. And I was like, guys, we should quit trying. It doesn't matter. <laughs> You're like, we're not going to get there. Person, the journey's right? done. See, I would be... This is why I don't hang out with people that do escape rooms. Like when you actually go to a place and all of you are actually in a room. No. Because <laughs> my punk hiney would bring a buck. Right. right. And I would, while everybody's Figured figuring out stuff self. out, I'd be like, you know what? Have at it, y'all. I'm going to read the book. You know, I have an intense fear of failure. And so I would have a panic attack the entire time going, we can't fail at this because there's a picture afterwards that says whether you escaped or not. And there will be like evidence of my failure. And I can't deal. See, my problem, I, I as much as I laugh about bringing a book and, and I would do that because that's just me. See, um, After a while, I would get claustrophobic. Right. And the um, idea that I yeah. couldn't get out. Yeah, because you're trapped in there. Freak yeah. me out. Yeah. So I don't do no. escape room stuff. That's, that's totally fair. The, the, the tenants are like you gotta move like they'll come by and give you hints to get move you oh, along have you done it but yeah have you done one i've done <laughs> I like never a, have. a miniature one i guess in um gatlinburg tennessee there's okay like a egyptian theme okay one. what's a miniature is it like super <laughs> small it's a closet yours. you're in a closet like four rooms. <laughs> okay, right. i haven't done the, the real ones but i was like four little rooms like okay. homemade and the people were Some like kind of torture story <laughs> isn't, isn't that a movie in a called house for you isn't that a we movie were... called the cube <laughs> <laughs> there was like like four little rooms and we were trying to be like polite and let like the kids solve it <laughs> and eventually the people were like you know if you need a hint <laughs> <laughs> you need it. Wow. Man. They were like, y'all dumb. They were like, 40 minutes to get through these rooms. We're tired of y'all, so here's your hand. Get out. 
we've got another no. group ready to come in. No, the worst thing was out in the lobby, they have like a little wooden crate and it had something where like, you know, you're supposed to stick your hand in. No. I could not do that. <laughs> I knew like there was something that was good. It was just, it was a puff of air. That uh, was like, right, right. <laughs> but it's still, but I was like, that's a nope for me. It's like, dark hit. Nope, nope. It took me. <laughs> oh my God. It took me like a half hour. <laughs> like, oh my nope, God. Nope. To put your hand in a raptor cage? Nope. That's nope. cool. That is hysterical. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we totally digress. Exactly. But what is your answer? So my answer <laughs> is very silly. You like yes, silly. Don't I, I have a, it's, it's a, it's a bias. That is, I logically, I know, I get it. I get it. I get it intellectually, but <laughs> my brain can't sometimes handle it. So <laughs> when I realized that the Nile River flows north, right, that was kind of messing with my brain because if you look at a flat map, north is up. Correct. Mm-hmm. And you don't think of rivers <laughs> flowing up. So, I mean, I get it. The southern end of the Nile is at a higher right. elevation. So it's flowing south and down. Da- or it's flowing down. down. Yes, exactly. Yeah. You know, and down happens to be north and towards <laughs> the Mediterranean to Sea. Up, therefore, brain explodes. But <laughs> n- looking at it on a flat map on the table or whatever, it's up. And mm-hmm. water flowing up just... <laughs> It's a Christmas I, miracle. I can't. I can't. Yeah. <laughs> it's just can't sometimes if I can't just think about it. Right. Like I just have to intellectually know and right. move on. Because like I, I just believe you. Sure. What yes. else? Can we just. Yeah. Next. <laughs> we just See, this is exactly how I feel about the hot dog being a sandwich it's argument sandwich. that Bonnie brought up. And then today yes. you're handing out stickers to Eden. But and wait I a see minute. that sticker and I'm like, I cannot look at it. I cannot see it. I cannot think yeah, about I, it. Hot dog is I, okay. I, I've had <laughs> Take yeah. the sticker. Yeah. But see Sorry, you don't you passionate. don't eat a sandwich on its edge. <laughs> see? You yeah. eat it flat. Yeah. That that's where Nobody it is. Okay. That mm. That's how yeah. you don't eat the sandwich. <laughs> but it's got bread. Edge. It does have Shut up. two pieces of bread <laughs> and a Shut piece up. of meat like Stop substance talking. in the middle. <laughs> One side don't of ruin it. Closed. <laughs> don't mess with it. They Correct. Face sandwiches like a meatloaf. All right. Sandwich? Is a pita a sandwich? Oh no, we're going to do it. All right, so back to Africa. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Who's your one cool African Okay, my gal? one cool gal pal, who is uh, African, Yay. is Queen Nzinga. <gasps> you got a queen. And Crown girl, it. you know I got to me a queen, because I am to I me a queen. I love it. Anyway, so um, I found out about Nzinga originally uh, because back in the day, like the 90s, um, <laughs> For a minute there, because, uh, you know, nobody loves the black community more than McDonald's because nobody <laughs> eats at McDonald's more than the black community. I don't know if I've ever heard that phrase before. <laughs> oh, now it's stuck in my brain. Too, man. <laughs> Think about it because, well, maybe you don't know, but whenever there's like black programs on like PBS, they're oh, always one of McDonald's? the sponsors. Ah, you okay. never see any other fast food plays sponsoring gotcha. like black events gotcha. or black programming or right, whatever. Okay. Anyway. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just kind of an inside joke. I got it. I us, like it. Uh, black folks. Anyway, <laughs> so back back in the 90s, um, McDonald's wanted to do this thing where they uh, promoted what they called little known black history oh, facts. Nice. They were all part of their um, kind of like their their advertising campaign. Okay. Yeah. And obviously it tended to be during February. Of course. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then right. they, they what they did was they had these little little known black history facts yeah, and they put them all in a little book mm-hmm. and you could buy like the book was like maybe um a dollar 99 or whatever and, yeah. but you could buy the book and then the following year because it was so popular they did another set ah. of little known black history facts and then bundled that mm-hmm. so of course me I always had to buy the book. Yeah, so right? I bought the little books. And one of the things I missed in one of their ads, but it was in the book, was this queen. Ah. And I was like, okay, now I'd heard of like Cleopatra and all right, that. Right, exactly. Yeah. But yeah. and and Nefertiti. Yes. Who's also my girl. Exactly. Uh, but I figured people <laughs> knew about Nefertiti. Right, right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I knew nothing about Nzinga. So here we go. Yes. So Nzinga, her her full original name was Nzinga. Mbande. 
Gotcha. Okay. I was ready for you to do like seven or eight different names because that's usually what Bonnie does. <laughs> <laughs> well, see, I worked with enough sure African right. to know how to pronounce certain things. And, and see, nice. When you when you read a name, uh, it's always spelled kind of phonetically. Gotcha. Okay. Okay. So Trust I just the phonetics that. in this case. Yeah. Unlike so French. It's, <laughs> right. It's like Latin. Drop off okay. Okay. You right. know, everything <laughs> sounds the way it's kind of supposed to. Perfect. Okay. So um, she uh, ended up. The monarch, the queen, the head, the ruler of the Imbundu people. Uh, and they lived in what is now Angola. So um, she was the bomb.com, <laughs> quote my friend. Um, nice. So she was born in uh, 1583. So her contemporary, she would have been a contemporary of Shakespeare. Gotcha. Just to put it into, yeah. you know. A timeline. Kind a ti- of. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, so that's when he's doing his thing right in his early plays. Mm-hmm. So she lived, like I said, in what is now Angola. And, which is in Central Africa. And um, this would have been the height of when the Portuguese are trying gotcha. to really amp up the transatlantic slave trade. Great. Josh's people. <laughs> Josh's people, unfortunately. Sorry. <laughs> Genealogy. Frickin so sorry, Portuguese. Josh. Yeah, exactly. So sorry. You anyway, know what you did. Right. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> so her, um, her father was, obviously she wasn't the ruler when she was born her (laughs) father was the ruler and then eventually her um her brother took over and then after he died she ended up taking over gotcha which was kind of odd because you know chick right Mm -hmm. so anyway um during the latter part of the 16th century so that'd be the 1500s for those of you keeping (laughs) score the french and the english wanted to pretty much knock the Portuguese off their we're number one monopoly right. on the transatlantic slave trade. Cool. And so um, <laughs> the Portuguese weren't going to let their king of the mountain status go. Mm-hmm. And so you had this kind of three-way fight going mm-hmm. with Africans. In the middle. Stuck in the middle. Right. <laughs> Literally. Wanting them all to lose. <laughs> right. So um, by 1580... Uh, you know, around the time that uh, she was born, um, the Portuguese had established uh, a trading relationship with a nearby kingdom. That would be the Congo, the kingdom of the Congo, there you the go. Congo kingdom, however you say that. Anyway, with uh, with their ruler, uh, Alfonso I. And so um, eventually they moved from the Congo to south of there, which is what is now Angola. Gotcha. So the Portuguese, they had a settlement, they had a fort. So now it's like the early 1600s and they're encroaching on Imbundu land. Mm -hmm. Okay. And so by 1622, the Imbundu king, his name is, I love this, Ngola. (laughs) Ngola. (laughs) Hmm, Angola. Ngola. (laughs) Anyway, his name was... King Angola Mbande. Gotcha. And he tried to, um, there was going to be like a peace conference. They were going to, he was going to try to organize a conference that would um, end the hostilities yeah. with his people. And so uh, he decided, so at this point, the king is now uh, the brother. Mm-hmm. Okay. So the father has probably died by this point. Um, the, the son slash brother is now in charge. Mm-hmm. And so t- he decides to send his sister in Zynga to represent him at this um, conference. Yeah. He's not well, hoping secretly that she dies and he survives, is he? <laughs> it's not um, one of those, just in case this goes sideways, I'm uh, sending my sister. <laughs> no, um, <Cool>. I think... <laughs> Okay, now, I'm not entirely sure. Right, right, yeah, fair enough. But uh, a few thoughts go into my head. Yeah. One, he knew his sister was a badass. Right, there's that. Okay. Yes, you're sending the strongest player to the right. game. Right. Yeah, yeah. So, um, and we all know it's the chick in, you know, when you're playing chess, who's right. like, yeah. <laughs> so. <laughs> Don't pay attention to this. Right. But pay attention to this. Exactly. Yes. Uh, another idea could be that, I mean, because, you know, rulers are busy. They'll yeah. send an emissary. That's not 
odd. And yeah. if all he had was a sister, yeah. or the sister was the best person to send, of course he's going to send her. Yeah. Another or maybe I, he was a bad negotiator. Or that. <laughs> um, or it could be because he's dealing with Europeans, yeah. and Europeans are very pro patriarchy right. and anti chicks in power. Right. Um, some of them at least. Right. Uh, that he could have sent her to make a statement. Right. Now, I'm not I don't know what his motivation was, yeah. but regardless It could have been a combination of all of it. Right. Yeah. So um she goes mm-hmm. and realizes that this conference, air quotes, was really <laughs> just a meeting between uh, the Portuguese governor, okay, and by governor I mean like he's the guy who's in charge of the area that they're in, gotcha, in Africa. Right. So not governor like we think, where he came all the way from Portugal. I mean, this right. is the dude in charge, mm-hmm. you know, for the Portuguese here in this area. Right. So, um, yeah. So it ended up being just her and him. Oh. Okay. And to make matters worse, they're in this big, you know, room, mm-hmm. you know, like a throne room kind of room. Yeah. He's the only one with a chair. Oh. Mm. Now, this is why this woman is my girl. <laughs> this right here. Uh-huh. Because she didn't go by herself. She came... With the entourage? With an entourage. Yes. Because what, what's, a, you know, a future queen going to do but travel with an entourage? Exactly. So she realizes that he's got the only chair in the room. Mm-hmm. And the idea that they're, that she's standing and he's seated puts makes it look like he's got more power than she does. Right. And she said, oh, hold up, wait a minute. <laughs> so she signals one of her entourage. Yeah. To come over, and the person kneels down on all fours, yes, so that she can sit. That's right. Upon mm-hmm. that person, she brought her back. own chair. Yes, <laughs> yes, because she said, "You're not gonna play me like that." Right. Exactly. Okay. Nice. So, um, that's like my favorite part of <laughs> my favorite it says people furniture because right. she yeah. said Chairs. you are not gonna do me like that mm-hmm. and i will one-up you right you know you don't have a people chair no <laughs> so anyway uh this person um you know stayed on all fours for her for the rest of this meeting now, also how kudos long to who that yes. ever was thank yes. you because uh there yes. were no knee pads right. there was no you know right. whatevs exactly kudos <laughs> yeah so um so in this meeting they end up coming up with um accommodations also more with the air quotes because what that really means is she accommodated the portuguese and not the other way around really right, right. so because it's portugal and portugal was uh christian mm-hmm. uh specifically they were catholic uh she converted and she ended up changing her name so it sounded more portuguese so she uh-huh. became uh donna anna de souza wow that sounds really Portuguese yes. <laughs> anglicized. And so um, <laughs> it's important to know that the name of the Portuguese gov- governor that she met with was, um, I can't pronounce his first name, um, Jao Coria de Souza. Okay. Oh. So essentially... Like when taking he, his name. Yes. Mm. So it was okay. like she becomes daughter of or Property, sister in other words. of. Yeah. Kind of, kind of. Family? Kinda, it's more like family? family. Okay. Yeah, I All think right. that's how she looked at it. Okay, good. Because I'm like, she's still a woman in this scenario. Right. Mm. And the reason why I say <laughs> that is because when she was baptized, yeah. um, she was baptized in the honor of his wife. Okay. All so right. the wife, so the familial. governor's wife, yeah. becomes her godmother. Oh, hmm. all right. Okay. So yes, it's much more of a familial, right? You know, very extended, extended. But it's still um, a power play. Exactly. And political. Yeah. Exactly. So um, she ends up urging her brother mm-hmm. to urge their people to convert to Christianity. Okay. And that didn't totally sit well, but you know, they kind (laughs) of did it anyway and whatever. But all of this was done, of course, with the idea that the uh, Portuguese would back off. Right. Exactly. And they really didn't. Oh, good. Because, you know, these are always one-sided. Of course. So, um, shortly after, uh, in 1626, um, 
the brother ends up committing suicide. Oh, goodness. So I think he saw it as a failure that uh, the Portuguese were still, um, their participation in slave trading Mm -hmm. was getting more and more. And the you um, two had an intense fear of failure. <laughs> Shit, could be <laughs> somebody um, keep me on watch. And it says <laughs> that you know the the Portuguese demand. Yeah, well, yeah. For concessions that worked in their favor, just kept rising. mounting. Yes, yeah. and yeah. and so he, um, you know, and that's a you know, yeah, I, mean, I can see that. Yeah, all jokes aside, <laughs> right? That's a lot. It you is. Know. It's very much, a lot. and um, you have a you have so many people. Relying right. on you for their lives. Exactly. It's different, yeah. Right. So I'm pretty sure he, you know, and the people accepted these Christian, you know, concessions, but mm-hmm. he soon realized it didn't work. Yeah. So when he, after he died, um, Nzinga became queen. She became gotcha. the ruler. So, and that was uh, 1626. So um, Nzinga obviously realized, being smart, that, you know, the Portuguese were not going to stop. Right. And so she had to figure out a way to fight them because she doesn't want to lose her people. Cause yeah. you know, once they're gone into the slave trade, they're gone off to the Americas mm-hmm. and they're that's not it. coming back. Yeah. You're right. Yeah. So, um, in 1627, what she ends up doing is, uh, she forms alliances with some of the, um, Imbundu people's, uh, rivals ah. and the enemy the, of my enemy is, is my friend uh, yeah. <laughs> least in battle <laughs> so uh because obviously these it wasn't just her people being sold right, in slavery right. it's yeah. everybody mm-hmm. you know so she's like if, if you want to if you want to fight these people join us let's fight mm-hmm. these people yeah so um she and her army held the portuguese off for about 30 years. Oh, wow. Okay. Score. So this is a 30 year war. Nice. You know, and eventually, um, she ended up, uh, because the, the Portuguese were also being encroached upon their slave trading was being encroached upon by the French and the English. Right. So she also exploited, (laughs) um, the, that rivalry. Yeah. Oh, yeah, exactly. Um, you, you know. You got to. So she kind <laughs> of, you know, used the French and the English against the Portuguese mm-hmm. to help weaken her opponent. And then you've got the Mbundu people and their, um, you know, neighboring tribes yeah. also. So they were able to hold off, you know, all of this. Um, 30 years. Yeah. That's awesome mm-hmm. and fast. Yes. <laughs> um, they also added an alliance with the Dutch. Gotcha. You know, so she's just, she's working that chessboard. <laughs> yes. Like nobody's business. <laughs> the enemy of my enemy is my friend. Right. At the very least, I'm going to act like I'm their friend. So they'll do Until, what I want. Right. You know, so mm-hmm. that I can get my job done. So she ends up um, doing all of this. She ends up defeating the Portuguese army in 1647. Wow. Now, to put this more into perspective, in the United States, as it was at the time, in 1619, we've got the first set of folks coming to Virginia, or they end up in Virginia, um, off of a Dutch slave ship. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The ship had left Africa with 20-some Africans on it that was probably headed back um, to Holland, to the Netherlands, Mm -hmm. um, since it was a Dutch ship. And a storm, I think, overtook it. And then as a result of that, they end up landing, uh, I think, in a, a U.S. ship somehow also took advantage or whatever but Mm -hmm. i think between the weather and an interception by a united states vessel Mm -hmm. the 20 some uh africans on that dutch slave ship ended up in virginia and that's how we get the the quote-unquote ceremonial beginning of Mm -hmm. enslavement right in the united states gotcha mind you in the fifth in the early 1500s they were already Africans being captured and enslaved and brought to all the Americas right. in the um, early 1500s. Mm-hmm. So 
you know, that included Florida. Florida at the time was not part of the United mm-hmm. States. It was part of Mexico. Right. Because it was settled by Spain. So a lot of people get confused about yeah. the official start. Then they're confusing the official start of it in the United States. Mm-hmm. Right. Versus the official start in what became, ended up the United States. Right, exactly. And yeah, yeah. what ended up all of the Americas. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So all of that gets a little confused. But just to put the slave trade timeline right. into perspective. So it's 1647 and her army has defeated the Portuguese army. Nice. So um, then the Dutch uh, end up uh, defeating the Portuguese. Uh, they ended up pretty much re- withdrawing. Uh, the Dutch ended up withdrawing from Central Africa. Now they were still around right. in other parts of Africa, mm-hmm. but not in Central Africa. But Nzinga still, you know, she still struggled against, mm-hmm. you know, because the even though she defeated the Portuguese army, there were still skirmishes and they were still, yeah, they were still trying. Exactly, you know. they didn't give up super easy. <laughs> right. So now she's in her sixties. Ah. Now I don't know what. Anybody you know in their 60s are doing. And this is a different time when you didn't live to your 60s. Well, yeah. So being in your 60s is kind of a a, a milestone. Yeah. So, uh, I mean, I'm not sure what the life expect- expectancy of Central Africa was at the time. But right. she's in her 60s and she's still personally leading troops into battle. Oh, nice. wow. She's on the battlefield. Still. She is. On, yes. Not wow. up on a hill on a horse somewhere. Right. Like, oh, look at the infantry. <laughs> that like, looks oh, like that sucks. That, yeah. Woo, <laughs> that, that took a bad hit. No, like she is leading the charge. Wow. Kind of thing. So um, what what is so fantastic about uh, Africans in warfare is obviously they're on their home turf. Right. Exactly. This is this is why enslaving the Native Americans didn't work in the United States mm-hmm. because they were on their home turf right. and, and the they Europeans knew it well. were not. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yes. Mm-hmm. So here, you know, these Europeans have come into the continent of Africa mm-hmm. and they're meeting Africans who are again, they've got the languages mm-hmm. and the uh familiarity with the terrain yep. and they were the people that invented pretty much invented guerrilla warfare. See. Okay. And um, guerrilla warfare is how um, the people of Haiti ended up overthrowing Haiti and actually Mm. creating Haiti. Right, exactly. You know what I mean? They used because... And that's guerrilla with a U. Yes, (laughs) not like like creatures you see in the zoo. (laughs) That was my favorite kind of revolution. That's guerrilla with a U. Right. (laughs) (laughs) Yes, guerrilla warfare... Not animal gorillas, but the style of warfare the gorillas, best kind. where you're hiding and you're because you know yeah. Europeans had like battle plans and you right. had formations. We will show up on this date and right. we will present and arms. And then you march towards we each other with teeth. swords and right. spears and it's a horses. Ceremony and... where everybody dies yes. versus. <laughs> I'm going to get you when you're sleeping. These people will (laughs) jump out the bushes, jump out, jump out the trees. War isn't fair. (laughs) War is not fair. And they will get you. Yeah. And so this is what she would do. She would orchestrate these guerrilla attacks um, against the Portuguese. And she was successful because that was not their battle strategy. Right. And they clearly weren't learning (laughs) from past mistakes. And, you know, that's not their style. That right. was not European style of warfare. Right. So, um, and also that's not, you know what I mean? The people who live there, not their problem. Exactly. <laughs> You've come to my house. Right. Right. And this what do they the say? I play with. All's fair in love and war. There it is. So anyway, um, uh, <laughs> totally. So, um, and all of this really, uh, cause it took really the Portuguese a while to, to get out. And, um, of course, in 1975, when mm-hmm. I was about four, <laughs> Angola became Angola yeah. and uh, became an independent country. Right. Um, but anyway, so um, despite the fact, here's another chicky poo that people are trying to kill. <laughs> right. You know, um, they were trying to capture her. They were trying to kill her. They were trying to do everything they could. She died peacefully. Oh, yeah. In her 80s. Wow. Nice. In December on the 17th in 1663. Wow. So, I mean. That's amazing. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> 
I love her. You know, she didn't die in prison. Right, she, didn't she didn't die of old battle wounds. She wound. didn't die on the battlefield like, either. She probably yeah. went in her sleep or something. Yeah, but like, you oh, know, I'm good. Yeah, <laughs> you know, whatevs. I got you. I had you. You know, we That's good. Amazing. Peace out. But yeah, totally. Badass. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Well, I would strongly urge anybody interested in Nzinga that she was one of several right. rulers that were fighting back. We're fighting back that were women. Yes. Um, there was one lady, I can't think of her name off the top of my head, but she ended up we getting have wounded notes, in so the it's eye. Fine. Oh, really? Nice. Um, and mm. so this woman wore an eye patch into yes. battle. Yes. Like, <laughs> that is some gangster pirateness right there. Exactly. But, you know. Um, the one eyed lady. I can just right. see it now. Be you know aware I mean? of the one eyed lady. <laughs> right. <laughs> you know? Um, and don't get me started on the Dahomey warriors. Gotcha. Because the Dahomey had female warrior. They had a female army and they had a male army. Right. And I know that. Um, Lupita and Ga- in Yango, yeah, and uh, I think uh, uh, Viola Davis mm. are making a movie right now oh, about that's, that's right. the Dahomey female warriors. Oh, nice! And Look there were that. there was at least one Dahomey that helped um, with that same Haitian revolution. Oh, like, nice! So yeah, Look at that battle warriors royale. Totally. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I absolutely love it. That is fascinating that's how you get shit done totally <laughs> okay so that about wraps it up for this week <laughs> join us next week as our next gal pal shares her one cool african gal as gal's guide to the galaxy podcast continues thank you so much for listening before you hit stop, don't forget the fate of the Gauss Guide Women's History Library is in your hands. We found a space. Now it's up to you to keep it open. Plus, there's really cool limited edition rewards, too. But only until Valentine's Day. So visit galsguide.org today and let's make history. For show notes, links, and images from this week's show, visit galsguide.org. Want exclusive stuff like deleted bits and major bloopers? Become a Galsguide patron today. Thanks for listening.